Do you know way down, way down, way down up on the Swanee, Swanee. talking about the river, river. you know so far, so far, so far away, so far oh, away. Yeah. Do you know that's where, that's where, where my heart is a turning, oh, ever, yeah, and that's where, that's where, uh, that's uh, where the old folks stay, the old folks stay. You know as well as I do, Alice, that money is better than things. I would rather have money in my wallet. In my wallet, I'd rather have money than all the things in the world. So let Norton have his vacuum cleaners. Let him have his television sets. Let him have his electrical stoves. Go ahead. I got one thing that he hasn't got. I got it here. <laughs> you got it here. And you got it here. something else is busted. If only that husband of yours would buy you something new for once. Mother, it isn't Ralph's fault. It isn't Ralph's fault. Look, Alice, just because you're married to a horse doesn't mean you have to live in a stable. What is she doing here? Please, Ralph, she's my mother. What's that? Your lunchbox? <laughs> Well, look, Alice, I'm short a couple of bucks, and I gotta pay my dues at the lodge tonight. They're gonna throw me out if I don't. Don't you give them a cent, Alice. One of these days, you're gonna push me too far. The only thing that could push you is a bulldozer. <laughs> All right, get up! I have to be going anyway. You were going anyway. Whether you were going anyway or any other way, I'm throwing you out anyway. There isn't room in this place for you and me. There isn't room in this place for you and anybody. Out! <laughs> Ah! All right, where is it? I'm in my, I'm in a... You heard me, where is it? All right, all right, um... Okay, Fatso. I'm giving you ten seconds to give us the money or I'm letting you have it. Come on, I'm in a, I'm in a money. All right, I'm going, Officer, officer arrest that big fat one there. He's the one who gave me the counterfeit bill. Mama, I'm sunny boy. Yeah. I suppose you forgot that all this stuff has to go back, too. Every bit of it. All that is, except your suits, Ralph. The tailor can't take those back. He doesn't know any elephants that need a new water. I'm trying to tell you some good news. Oh, all right, Ralph, I'm sorry. What is it? Well, to begin with, uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to need this lunchbox much longer. Ralph, you're going on a diet. <laughs> no, I am not going on a diet. Well, why won't you need this lunchbox? Are you getting a bigger one? <laughs> Practicing playing golf. Oh, is that what it is? I thought it was football, the way your backfield was in motion. <laughs> Well, it's great to have a wife with a sense of humor, Norton. <laughs> I can't do it. You can't discourage me, Alice. I don't care if you've got any confidence, because I have enough confidence in me for the both of us. You've got enough everything in you for the both of us. <laughs> How'd you like to go sailing over the clubhouse, huh? <laughs> Did I, or did I not this morning, tell you to wash and iron my bowling shirt? Oh, I'm sorry, Ralph. I was so busy today, I just didn't get around to the laundry. You just didn't get around to it? That's right, I just didn't get around to it. Why don't you wear one of your regular white shirts? What's the difference anyway? What's the difference? I'll show you what the difference is, Alice. Do you see that? Do you see those big letters? They're put on there purposely. They say hurricane. <laughs> hurricane! 
Do you know why they're on there? That's when I'm bowling and I'm on the alley, people who are watching the game know which team I am a member of. I'm a member of the Hurricanes, Alice. How are they going to know I'm a hurricane? Just open your mouth. The maids are aware of this, and uh, they've all become very independent. Independent? <laughs> oh, hello, Thelma. This is a maid? I thought maids had short skirts with white hats and black silk stockings. The chubby one's going to be trouble. <laughs> and uh, if you're... Uh, if you're planning on uh, having any late snacks, I don't do no cleaning up the next morning. And this boy looks like he has plenty of late snacks. I told you to stop saying okay. It's very good, sir. This happens to be my guest, and I am your employer. Mm, some guest and some employer. The simp and the blimp. <laughs> I got it. I'll call her what I used to call her before we were married. What's that? Little Buttercup. <laughs> Wait a minute. I didn't call her that. She called me that, Little Buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? She used to call you a Little Buttercup? Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny about that, Norton? You a little cup of butter, and I a whole tub of lard. <laughs> Leave him my, uh... Not! I haven't got any worldly possessions. I'm going in six months and I've got nothing to leave her. Not a cent. I gotta leave her something. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I just got an idea. Look, as long as you're going anyway, why don't you sell your body to science? If they pay by the pound, she'll be left a millionaire. <laughs> Everybody will read it. I can see it now. The first installment, the title of it. Doom Man has only six months to go. Uh, uh, I think that's a little lengthy for the title. They'll probably chop it down, make it shorter, like, uh, in six months, Blimp takes off. <laughs> well, speak to me. You hear me? <laughs> He's gone. He didn't even last for six months. He didn't last for six months. The poor little kid. The poor little fat kid. <laughs> Never again will you wear these little socks. <laughs> Never again will you wear this little cap. <laughs> Never again will you wear these little pants. I'm glad you're here. You hold his head while I put mm -hmm. this under his nose. No use, Alice. No use. You must be approaching the pearly gates right now. <laughs> At this time, they're, they're probably tearing down part of the fence to let him in. <laughs> Let's face it, Ralph, Trixie hasn't had any sleep in three nights. If she doesn't get some rest soon, she's just going to waste away to nothing. She didn't have any sleep in three nights. How about me? I haven't slept in three nights. She'll waste away. Don't you care if I waste away? Yes, I care, Ralph. But you wouldn't waste away if you stayed awake for nine years. <laughs> How would you like to waste away on a moon, huh? Ralph, well, I gotta hand it to you, in between those two fat little ears is a great thinking apparatus. Shut up and turn around. I am now going to put the key where even if you know where it is, you won't be able to get it. Right under my pillow. Now you will have to lift me up bodily in order to get at the key. Gotta hand it to you. You finally come up with something even Dick Tracy couldn't handle. <laughs> Don't you understand? Norton and I, we chip in $300 and we make $2,000. $2,000, Alice. That's big, big, big. This is probably the biggest thing I ever got into. The biggest thing you ever got into was your pants. <laughs> I will never set foot in this building once I walk out that door. You're going to be awful lonesome around here all by yourself, Alice. Just remember. You can't put your arm around a memory. I can't even put my arms around you. <laughs> you got a tablecloth that'll fit. Gee, I don't think I have anything for a table that big. But uh, let's see, what have I got in the house that's large enough to cover that big table of yours? 
How about a pair of Ralph's white shorts? <laughs> now, what's that for? Well, put some butter on your finger and then flip the ring off. Butter on my finger at 89 cents a pound? <laughs> Will you stop throwing my money around? Isn't there any lot here? Yeah, about 300 pounds. <laughs> he put that little ring on his finger? That's like King Farouk trying to get into Gary Cooper's bathing suit. <laughs> Boy. I'm telling you, Alice, you could be pretty proud of that husband of yours. I'm telling you, he's going to go far at that bus company. You know why? Because his heart and soul is in his work. That's why. All he thinks about is buses. He eats, drinks, and sleeps buses. He's even built like one. <laughs> <laughs> I take back my offer to you of a job in the sewer. Besides, you wouldn't even fit through the manhole. Get out! Is this middle drawer yours? That's right. Is it yours? All right. Is it jammed? What stuff? Huh? Everything you bought? Now, is the bottom drawer mine? That's right. All right. In there is one pair of pants. <laughs> Why is one pair of pants of mine in that drawer? Because one pair of your pants is all that'll fit in there. <laughs> you know, you and Alice don't look very much alike for a brother and sister. Uh, there's very little family resemblance. Does that sound? Well, no offense, but uh, she's so, um... Hmm... And you're so, uh... <laughs> what are you doing with all that material? Making a bedspread? No, I'm letting your pants out again. <laughs> Don't you, uh, think you let them out a little too much? I haven't started yet. I suppose it was my imagination the day we got married. And she went around the reception telling that joke about me to everybody. I suppose that was my imagination. What joke? You know what joke. You remember the joke. I don't remember. Oh, what yes, joke? you do. She ran around to everybody and said, I'm not losing a daughter, I'm gaining a ton. <laughs> Well, let me tell you something. I had some chances, too, you know, before I married you. <laughs> Don't laugh, Alice. There were plenty of girls crazy about me, and you know it. Every time I went down to the beach, they used to crowd around me. Sure. Sure they crowded around you. That didn't mean they were crazy about you. They just wanted to sit in the shade. <laughs> let me tell you something. Mine's got a beat. Got to beat a mile. I can't even afford to feed her. Boy, can she eat. When she comes to dinner, she clears that table like a hurdler. Phew, and is she fat? From the front, she looks like you from the back. Do you realize, Ralph, what an embarrassing position you're putting me in? What am I supposed to say when my mother comes here and you're not here? What do I care what you say? Tell her I ran off and joined the circus. <laughs> what as, an elephant? <laughs> That too, Alice. That too. You think I'd break that poor little fat boy's heart? Well, you see, Alice, that's the difference between you and me. You are gullible, and I'm not. Anybody can put anything over on you, but they can't put it over on me. You're the type that would bend way over and pick up a pocketbook on April Fool's Day. I wouldn't. You couldn't. <laughs> President. Yes, Brother Norton. <clears throat> as uh, much as I hate to pay a compliment to the fat chairman of the drive, uh, <clears throat> well, well, I, I gotta hand it to you, a rotten ping pong player, but you make a good speech maker. <laughs> if you were 90 pounds lighter, the boys would have carried you out there on their shoulders. <laughs> what do you know about fishing in the first place? When did you ever catch anything? Fifteen years ago. <laughs> I caught 300 pounds of blubber. Merry Christmas, Ralph. Merry Christmas, Norton. <laughs> anyway, I know it came from your heart. No, it didn't. It came from the fat man's shop. Never mind. <laughs> Just remember, Norton, when there's an emergency, I come out of it. When they made me, they threw away the mold. <laughs> <laughs> they had to. You probably broke it. <laughs> I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. If you see me coming down the street, get on the other side. When you come down the street, there ain't no other side. <laughs> that 
the trouble with you? You don't know the latest developments. I don't know the latest developments. Who is it that lets your pants out every other day? Oh, it's you, Ralph. Boy, you had a scare there for me. I, I, I thought we were being invaded. <laughs> invaded? Did you hear that, Alice? It didn't take him long to find out that I'm the man from space. Space? Who said anything about space? I thought we were being invaded by Sherman tanks. <laughs> you mean to tell me you're not gonna take the chance to see a show like Murder Strikes Out? Instead, you wanna watch Captain Video and his video ranges? Now, come on, Norton. Do you wanna go or don't you? I can't use two seats. <laughs> That's a matter of opinion. I'll manage to squeeze in somehow. All right, go ahead and get dressed. No, oh, if Alice only had married those other boyfriends. Oh, Ralph, why do you eat so much? You're so fat. Hey, Alice, you look thin. Are you getting enough to eat? Oh. <laughs> oh, of course I am, Mother. You wouldn't say that if you could see our food bill. Well, I don't doubt the bills are high. But how much of the food are you getting? <laughs> Guess who I saw today? Who? Chester Barnes. Oh, you remember Chester, that nice boy that was so crazy about you. Yeah, how is he? Oh, he's fine. He's just fine. Oh, <laughs> and he's handsomer than ever. Oh, my dear. And he's so tall and slim. I guess a man doesn't... I guess a man doesn't have to get fat if he doesn't want to. Uh, I told you I am not going to your mother's. I'm too tired and I gotta get to bed early. You'll still get to bed early. We'll go to mother's, eat supper, and come right home. Now, you know I'm not that kind of a man. I'm not the kind that eats and runs. Eats and runs? The way you eat, you're lucky if you can walk. <laughs> Let me find out if you got a fever. If you don't have a fever, then your mind will be relieved. We'll put the heat and pad on just like the doc says. You'll be all right in the morning. You'll be your own fat, jolly self. <laughs> the way you were standing there, you looked like the leaning tower of pizza. <laughs> pizza, pizza. It may be pizza. I know pizza when I say it. You know that guy that works down, he's uh, a bus driver down at the uh, depot, Joe Lustig? Uh-huh. You know, the guy that's always making those stale jokes about me being slightly overweight? Mm -hmm. Bills will get bigger and bigger and I'll get less to eat. <laughs> I'll start losing weight. Then you know what I'll look like? Yeah, a human being. <laughs> Come on, sweetheart. Go back to bed. Gee, I never knew Davy Crockett was so fat. <laughs> Just between us, hint to Ralph always to face the camera. Because when he turns profile, brother, he's the biggest thing on television. <laughs> yes, sir. This is the time I'm going to get my pot of gold. Just go for the gold. You've already got the pot. <laughs> for the last time, Ralph, I'll be very proud if you win the 600 bucks. $600? Peanuts, peanuts. What am I going to do with peanuts? Eat them, like any other elephant. <laughs> Fine thing for a president of a corporation to be eating peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> you ought to be eating something that's sticking to those fat little ribs of yours. Hey, uh, what does icky mean? I don't know why. Alice just said I was icky. Must mean fat. <laughs> What's wrong with those expressions? Boy, oh boy, how can anyone so round be so square? <laughs> well, how about it? What do you think? Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Just, just give me a little time to drink this whole thing and... It's like seeing Ball the Dam for the first time. <laughs> well, is uh, lovable big stuff home yet? <laughs> Gee, I remember when I used to wear 165. Did you ever see a picture of me when I weighed 165 pounds? No, Ralph, I never did see any of your baby pictures. <laughs> Every time I try to do something, I get no backing from you. You never get behind me. Other husbands do things, they can always be assured of their wife standing behind. Why can't you stand behind me? Oh, it's not my fault, Ralph. There just isn't enough room back there. <laughs> now, I've got my shopping list all made out for tomorrow morning. I'm going to serve sandwiches, ice cream, coffee, punch, potato chips, peanuts. Chocolate cake with happy birthday to Ralph on it. Mm -hmm. Well, on second thought, I better make that coconut cake. Why? Ralph's crazy about chocolate cake. That's just it. I bought him a new belt for his birthday, and I want to make sure it fits the day after. Oh. 
Well, you could always exchange it for a larger size. There is no larger size. <laughs> if this bell doesn't fit Ralph, then it's back to safety pin. All right, Ralph, you haven't touched it in years. I want to keep it. Okay, he's right, Alice. He hasn't touched his toes in years either. He still wants to keep them. <laughs> uh, what is this amount here? One. 1053622. What amount? 10. That's no amount. That's my social security number. <laughs> I thought maybe it was your weight. <laughs> I'm quitting. I'm going home, and I never want to see you again. You are the only man that can turn my stomach upside down. Go ahead. There ain't a man in New York City that's strong enough to turn your stomach upside down. <laughs> I know they're gonna get me, Norton. I'm a scared. I'm a scared. Just calm down. Relax. Look, it's getting dark out. It's 5 o'clock, 5.30. You know, nobody's seen you. All they've seen is the dark outline, you know? Maybe there's a uh, thousand people there built like you in New York City. You really think so? Maybe a hundred or... <laughs> a couple, anyway. Ow! Hey, yo, take it easy. That's my wife. What are you gonna do about it, fatso, huh? Now, look, Pudgy. Put your hands behind your Am back. I worthy of this honor? What made the judges pick me above all the rest? What do I have that stands out? <laughs> Mr. Cramden, you have a magnificent stage presence. And that voice. Mr. Norton, did you notice when he came in how his voice filled this room? I, I did notice that the room got a little crowded. I didn't realize it. <laughs> I got a little piece of news for you. It just so happens that Mr. Faversham thinks a great deal of me personally. As a matter of fact, one night at rehearsal, he said that I have something that comes across the footlights and reaches out into the audience. You certainly have. <laughs> hey, I gotta go downtown shopping tomorrow. There's a big sale on men's shorts, 89 cents a pair. Norton could sure use some. So could Ralph. What sizes they got? Oh, uh... All sizes, 32 to 50. No, nope, nothing there for Ralph. <laughs> well, let's see. Now, to begin with, you're close friends? Well, I am um, as close as anybody can get to Ralph Cramp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We've uh, known each other for a long time. Now, tell me, how long ago did you meet? Oh, I'd say uh, 150 pounds ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, Norton, it's like everything else. Group of men are picked to do a job, trained in the same fashion as each other. But there's always one man in the group that stands out far in front of the others. Yeah, I guess you're right there, Ralph. If you stood out any more in front, you wouldn't be able to get behind the wheel of a bus. Tomorrow morning, first thing, I'm going down to the sewer and talk to his boss. There's nothing, Alice, nothing in this world is going to stop me from going down that sewer tomorrow morning. Oh, no. There isn't a manhole in this city that you could fit through. <laughs> it's not going to work, Ralph. What do you mean it's not going to work? I'm going to squeeze Mr. Marshall. He's in no position to squeeze me. Of course not. <laughs> he couldn't even get his arms around me. All you have to do is pick your husband's outstanding feature and find a name that fits. <laughs> oh, I see. Isn't that a good idea, Tubby? <laughs> Billy, you won't even be able to walk the streets in the neighborhood. He says he's going to find you, and he's going to find you. He won't miss you. Because let's face it, Ralph, you're not the type that melts in the crowd. <laughs> Get a load of fatso over there. I'll see you in a minute. Don't... Hey, what are you doing? Out of my way, buddy. Hey, get a load of fatso there. <laughs> oh, come on, let's get moving. Just a moment. What did you say? I said, get a load of fats out there. Want to make something out of it? I certainly do. <laughs> Why would he say, hey, fatso, get out of the way? I don't know, maybe the phrase just fits. <laughs> Why should I cut out bowling? It's my only relaxation. Besides, the exercise is good for me to keep down my weight. You don't need anything to keep your weight down. You need something to hold it up. <laughs> What do you want, Mrs. Fogarty? 
Somebody's been taking things out of your rice box. Well, what are you telling me for? You think I'm the type of man that goes around taking things out of people's ice boxes? Don't be a Weisenheimer, Mrs. Fogarty. <laughs> Uh, Ralph, I, uh, I think it's a little tight squeeze in there. This is a case where the spirit is willing, but the flesh is just too much. <laughs> Look, maybe if I get out of here and you get in here, you can reach. That'll do it. That'll do it. I'm small. I mean, I hate to embarrass you or anything like that, but, you know, you're just a little too chubby. Now, oh, shut up. I was handling that jet of the job just perfect. Then that thing had to happen. And it wasn't my fault, Alice. It wasn't my fault. No. No, it wasn't your fault, Ralph. You were just doing an impersonation of two pounds of bologna in a one-pound bag. What are you laughing at? I was just thinking of the thing I wrote in your autograph book. Boy, you were sore about that. Today, it's something to laugh at. <laughs> what thing in my autograph book? Uh, some kids are small, some kids are tall. Fatso Cramden is the only kid who walks down the hall, wall to wall. I promise you this, Norton. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn from here on in how to swallow my pride. Well, that ought not to be too hard. You've learned how to swallow everything else. 